Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, what does LeVar Ball's latest bombshell mean for Lonzo and the Lakers? Plus, Ray Lewis joins the show to break down the AFC playoff race. And should Eli Manning start for the Giants on Sunday? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. Let's get started with LeVar Ball. He's at it again. Last month, LeVar called the Lakers coaches soft and said they didn't know how to coach his son. Lonzo set out the entire fourth quarter in Sunday's loss to the Rockets and only scored two points. LeVar spoke out again yesterday about Lonzo's state of mind during the Lakers' current five-game losing streak. Let's take a listen. He's very disgusted but won't say anything because he's not used to losing like this. This is an easy, fixable thing if everybody would just drop their egos and just listen to what I'm saying. Build it around Lonzo, you're going to be successful. But that sounds too bold. Let me ask you this. Would you say somebody is the face of your franchise and then don't start them the fourth quarter, the whole fourth quarter? We've been trying it their way, and that's why the record is raggedy. Shannon, what do you make of this? Yeah, he could be successful. If somebody just dropped that ego, Skip, that would be off. Oh. Drop that ego? Oh, no, 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 LeVar no. Ball said that? So I just want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm hearing LeVar correctly. Lonzo is the first rookie that's upset with losing. So losing is only mutually exclusive to Lonzo Ball. Is that what LeVar wants us to believe, Skip? Can I ask you a question, Skip? And, and feel free to answer this. Can you tell me why should Luke Walton play Lonzo Ball in the fourth quarter? Because let me give you these numbers, and then you respond. I don't think he wants me to respond. Yeah, I do. I do. I want you to respond to just to this. Yeah. In the fourth quarter, Lonzo Ball is shooting 27% from the floor. He's shooting 16% from the three-point line. He's 3 of 18. Mind you, against Sacramento, Joy, he was 2 of 2. So in the other game, he won 1 of 16 from the three-point line. Okay. <laughs> How are we supposed to play him, Skip? Oh, Okay. Saturday night, Joy, I happen to watch this game because, you know, Skip tell me he's going to be transcendent. And I blew off a date. Had me a good old date night. Had a good old date night. I said, I want to see old Lonzo. This is not true. It is a true story. True story. There's I said, no I way see, that happened. Skip it. I want to say, I want to see what Lonzo going to do because Skip not, tell me Lonzo not, Ball. Not is, you got it like that to be yeah. going off dates? Blew it off. Say, I ain't going nowhere. I said, I want to see well. Lonzo. Watch him. Put him on both TVs, Joy. I got two TVs, got them side by side, like 140 inches. I thought I was in a movie. If she was a real one, she would watch it with you. No, I, I had to watch this by myself. Oh, okay. But anyway, because I ain't want no interruption. I ain't want nobody. is piling up on the other <laughs> side of the desk right now. So let me get this straight. So Luke Walton didn't start him in the fourth quarter, Joy. He checked into the ball game at 451 remaining You're in the game. talking about Sunday night? I'm talking about Saturday night against the Nuggets. Oh, okay. But anyway, as I was saying, Joy, before I was rudely interrupted, Luke Walton checked him in at 451 in the ball game. Yep. Jordan's score was 98-98. Mm -hmm. Trey Bucket is 100 to 100. Guess what the final score was, Joy? 115 to 100. Lonzo Ball was a plus minus of minus 15 in the fourth quarter alone. But somehow LeVar Balls, LeVar Ball wants his son to play more. See, unlike you, LeVar, Luke Walton's job is not to hype. Your son. Luke Walton's job is to try to coach this basketball team and put the best five players on the floor at a given time that gives them the best chance to win. And see, what La what LeVar hasn't figured out yet, Skip, you can talk your way into endorsements. You can become a pitch man for a sneaker company. You can sell cars. You can sell beverages. You can't talk yourself into playing good ball on that court. And that's what LeVar thinks he can do. Oh, they just listen to me. That's the problem. They're not listening to you. So that's why it's great for them. Mm. If they listen to you, you know, he reminds me of somebody else I know, Skip. I'm not going to say the guy's name, but you know when every time when something goes wrong, it's always somebody else's fault. Joy, you know who I'm talking about. But think about this, Joy. I didn't like a call from the ref. Guess what I do, Skip? I take my boy off the court. Mm. I didn't like that UCLA was going to punish my son for something that he stole. Mm -hmm. I take my son out of school. You see what we're seeing here, Skip? It's always someone else's fault. Except his son. Mm. Now, let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip, that what LeVar said is true. That Lonzo told him that he's disgusted with losing. Do you think Lonzo wanted his dad to go tell that to the media? Huh. Hmm. Lonzo's figuring out for himself. There's something I got on my mind, I got on my chest. I need to keep that between me. Because if I tell it to my dad, hmm, it's going to mm. go to the media. So now, guess what's happening? They looking at him sideways. Oh. You tell your dad everything. Yeah, we thought you were soft. You, yeah, you validating everything. Everything that we thought, mm. you soft. Mm. LeVar Ball is going to be a problem, Skip Bayless. Mm. 
I agree times 1,000 with everything you just said, and I'm going to take it a big step farther. Of all the bombshells that LeVar Ball has dropped on the world, this one is by far the biggest and potentially the most destructive. Mm -hmm. He just said that 23 games into this NBA season, his rookie son, Lonzo Ball, is already disgusted, disgusted with the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. So now I get what happened Sunday night at Staples against the visiting Houston Rockets because the game that I watched on Sunday night, and I watched them all very carefully, I told you that Lonzo Ball basically shut it down in that game on Luke Walton. And in in the end, I tweeted after the game on Sunday night. I know it was an NFL Sunday, but I got my multiple TVs on too. And I'm watching your Eagles and my Lonzo (laughs) head to head. And I'm saying, what are you doing? Because he wasn't doing anything. He clearly was quitting on the court against Luke Walton. In the only 22 minutes that he played in that game, he barely tried. He disengaged. He unplugged. And at the end of the game, I tweeted, this is just hard to figure because I was dumbfounded until I heard his father say yesterday, he's disgusted. And to your point, now he has made public his son's deepest feelings yeah. about the head coach after he criticized Julius Randle, a teammate of Lonzo's, for not getting him the ball at the end of Golden State, one, one of the home games he actually played pretty well in mm-hmm. last week. And I, I got to believe that didn't sit well with Julius or the rest of the team. You are breaking unwritten rules right and left. You are making it harder and harder and harder on your son. And back to the Rockets game, it got so bad in the second half and the minutes that Lonzo was allowed to play that he would inbound the ball after a made basket to Brandon Ingram. Mm -hmm. And Brandon would give it – he's the point guard. You know, Brandon would just give give it it right back to him. And he would give it right back to Brandon at the end of the floor and say, you dribble the ball up the court. Brandon Ingram is a six foot nine inch small forward. Yeah. Lonzo, I thought, was supposed to be the point guard, and Lonzo would just drift over to the weak side and basically stand with his arms folded watching the others run the offense. When he would dribble the ball up the floor, Lonzo would half heartedly flip it over to somebody on the wing and drift to the weak side and basically stand with his arms folded watching the others run the offense. I've never seen anything quite like that. So now I get it. But I don't like it because, remember, for those who just joining us, who have been on Mars for the last six months. That's your guy. LeVar has coached all three of his sons all the way up Mm -hmm. through whatever the Little League was or Church League or whatever and up through AAU. And he has taught his sons, if you don't like it, quit. We'll go find someplace else. Mm -hmm. So clearly, just to reiterate, his youngest son, They didn't like the direction the new head coach at Chino Hills High School is going this year. So he yanks him out of school before his junior year of high school and says, I'll get him ready for the NBA. Then his middle son shoplifts in China. They're lucky to be home, but he did not like the way Steve Alford was handling the punishment of middle son. So he yanks him out of UCLA and says, I'll get him ready for the NBA draft. Now he doesn't like the way Luke Walton, only 23 games into an 82-game schedule, Mm -hmm. is coaching and handling his oldest son, and he's basically saying his oldest son is disgusted. So what's he going to do? Yank him? Is he going to demand a trade, I don't know, to the Clippers? I I don't know. Or, you know, seriously, this is where all this is heading. Will ultimately LeVar Ball have to start his own league in L.A. with a bunch of cast-off players? And he will coach all three of his sons on one team, and the other teams will be the equivalent of the old Washington Generals against the Globetrotters? Well, put them in the big three. 
Or put them in the big you three. You would love to have, have you, them. You could have them like that. Yeah. the big three. And they can win every game by 50 points. And also, you have to let LeVar coach and referee every game, right? <laughs> Just to make sure that, that the calls go the right way. Skip, right? so because what you're seeing, Skip, his son shoplifting in China isn't the problem. Steve Alford's punishment of said yeah, shoplifting. Yeah, but did you see what he said yesterday? Yeah. LeVar had the audacity to say this th that Steve Alford should bear some responsibility because you can't let those kids go out by themselves in what? China. And Steve Alford said, we had an hour and a half window, and I told them they have to go as a group yeah. in China. They have to stay together. But not go steal as a group. No, we didn't steal. want you to go shoplifting as a group. What? What? The? what? Oh. And it's Steve Alford's fault? I mean, they're, they're, they're 18. It, I mean, when you were 18, you, you, you could sort of go your own way, yeah. right? I mean, Skip, you we, went off to college? We went off to college. Yeah. Skip, when we traveled everywhere by bus. Sure. And a lot of times, we stopped at places like Morrison's or s, &S Cafeteria, and we ate as a team. We have a couple of minutes to walk through the mall. We didn't go steal. No. Nope. People, you know what? What? Skip, think about this. <sighs> he said, and, and Lonzo said, they went, and everybody started taking stuff. What in the hell did they do that at? LeAngelo said that. Yeah, yeah. Up to Angelo. Yeah, he said, we just, we just started we just taking started stuff. We just started taking stuff. <gasps> and, and he said, not until I got back to the hotel did I realize, oh, that, that wasn't right. What? What? He, See, thought, he thought, we're going to get away with this, no problem. What? Klepto. That's klepto. That's klepto, sir. I told you klepto. The son. Okay, it's not the coach. Okay, the coach want to coach my son. No, it's your, it's your fault that you won't let my son shoot 50 times or as many times in a game. So that's your fault. Okay, his son is struggling. Skip, the only thing that's saving his son is that the first pick in the draft has been worse than his son, who's the second pick, because Markel Fultz hasn't been playing that much. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Donovan Mitchell, you look at Jason Tatum, you look at Dennis Smith Jr., mm -hmm. Skip is not even close. Mm -hmm. They show up every night. They don't win. They're on bad teams. But they show up and they play hard every night. No one has questioned their effort or are they motivated or do are are they happy to be here? Mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball, I mean, Lonzo's like, oh, well. And his dad, well, it's, it's, it's your fault, Luke Walton, because you don't know how to coach my son. Mm -hmm. What about your son shooting 27%? What about the 16% from three? Skippy is averaging 1.8 in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. If you, we're behind, what in the hell is two points going to do? If we're ahead, how do I keep on the court? The wide open shots, he's missing. LeVar, at some point in time, you doing all this talk is just noise. You can't talk your son into playing better. Either he does or he doesn't. Either he can or he can't. Okay, speaking of can or can't, I'm going to frame this one last time because you believe that Lonzo is a soft bust, and I do not. I believe what Earl Watson, who was here yesterday, mm -hmm. former coach of the Phoenix Suns, has coached for San Antonio in this league, has been around a long time. He believes that Lonzo Ball is quote-unquote special. And I believe that, too, because I have seen special a number of times already in this still young 23 What have you seen young... more of, though? Here's what I've seen. I saw Summer League. And you laugh at Summer League, but you just brought up all those kids. The, uh, everybody you just mentioned, mm -hmm. Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, mm -hmm. Dennis Smith Jr., I can keep going, De'Aaron Fox. All these kids yeah. played in that same Summer League. So yeah. you can discount the Summer League all you want. But Josh Jackson was there. Fultz was there. They, they all played. Yes. And guess who the MVP was? Yes. I saw it. I saw special in the summer league because he was engaged. If you don't mind he me asking. He cared. Ask, let's talk about the game, uh, a sport that you covered and you followed mm -hmm. a little bit more extensively, the preseason football. Have you seen guys be special in preseason and not in the regular season? Yes, you have, Skip. Well, and it's I, just I, different. It's, it's a whole different I'm animal. I'm not, the, the, This is, the, these are sort of real practice games, but they're real. They're, they're, um. They're on television. They're a big deal. The summer league games are bigger. They than put the preseason, preseason football games, games on TV. I, I got you. I got you. And by the way, I've covered the NBA just as much as I covered the NFL. Would but you go like ahead. you like football no. better though? I, I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Well, I do. I ain't gonna sense me lying. Yeah. But here's the thing, though, Skip. It, but if you think about it, I'm not saying he's a bust. I don't see special. But you see okay, soft so, also. So, okay. Even even Earl Watson mm -hmm. said yesterday, when Jamal Murray dribbled that ball around, you got to take that tick there. Yeah, but against that same Denver team that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I, I saw Alonzo go for 19, 12, and 13. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. And against Earl Watson's team while he was still coaching Phoenix against Eric Bledsoe and Devin Booker, 
I saw Lonzo in game number two this year, and, and go, go ask Earl off camera about that game, how special that game was. Mm -hmm. I saw Lonzo Ball in attack mode the whole game go for 29, 11, and 9. It wasn't quite a triple-double, but 29, 11, and 9. And he just flat out took the game over. We're seeing some of the highlights yeah. right now. Down the stretch of the fourth quarter, it was spectacular. He just attacked the lane again and again. He scored three baskets with his left hand in the last two minutes of that game to seal the deal against a Phoenix team that was playing hard against mostly LeVar Ball. Like to put LeVar back in his place mm -hmm. like everybody else was. And then I saw the triple-double at Milwaukee. It's just not that easy. And then Eric Bledsoe was then in Milwaukee. And, and again, to, to, to have two triple-doubles already and to have consecutive rebound games of 16 and 13 rebounds, it's just special. And I see these big flashes of special, and then I see the games that you're talking about. There have been four home games this team should have won, and I told you yesterday, I blame the point guard, quote-unquote, Lonzo Ball, who plays non-games at home occasionally when he just completely disengages. And he disengaged against Houston, and I call that – basically quitting on the floor. You're just shutting it down because you don't like the way you're being handled by the head coach. Okay. And that's from the father. That's the way father taught son to react. Okay, Skip, you say they played 23 games. You mentioned the two games in which he's had triple doubles, and you mentioned the third, so the third game in which he had 29, 12, and 9. Mm -hmm. What about those other 20 games? What about those games Golden, he had two points? Golden State, he had 15 and 10, and it went right to the end, and they had a chance, and the dad criticized Julius for not passing ahead to Lonzo. And in the fourth quarter, Steph said, that's enough, and took the game over. He was really good okay. in those games. I saw flashes of special. And again, as Earl Watson always says, the, the point guard position is by far the hardest to transition in. Well, if, he's, in if he is what you say he is, it shouldn't be a problem. Well, I just said, I, you, you, can't, you can't argue with what I just gave you. Okay, what about you, those? You said he's a soft bust. I didn't so, skip, yes, you did. Skip. You've dismissed him. Soft I did not bust. say he's a bust. Uh. I said, I don't see what you see. He's soft. Earl was hold on. How, how do you get 16 rebounds and be a soft NBA player? A you, point guard. Is Russell Westbrook soft? Oh, I mean, they have the just, same mentality. Yeah. Are you comparing Lonzo Ball to Russell Westbrook? No, but he can average a triple-double. He's, he's not that far. He's, what, 9, 7, and 7 right now, and he's played terrible so far, and he's averaging 9, 7, and 7. Watch what will happen. You don't think he could average a, a no. Jason Kidd triple-double? No. I do. Yeah, and turnovers, it's, yeah, maybe it's so. It's close already. Okay, but you you're, keep... you're completely wrong okay, about what this. About the two points, what about the two points the other night? I what about what about the three of 18s? What just, about the sevens, the fives, the fours? I just told you what happens. He just shuts it down. Oh, you you doing the bar ball. Mm -hmm. you making excuses I'm for not, yourself. I haven't made any excuses. Yes, you are. I have not. Either you do or you don't. That's what pro sports is. It's very short list, Joy. You know what, Joe? I used to be, you know what I did before I did this? Mm. I was in the excuse making business. Couldn't make no money. You know what? I've seen Because <laughs> you can either whole, get results or you whole, make excuses. A whole lot of busts in the NBA. And you can just see right away, they just can't play at this level. And I've predicted a bunch of them before drafts. This kid can definitely play at this level. Skip. There, there's a As difference. Doc Rivers said the other night, just a week and a half ago, Doc Rivers said he's not going to be good. He's going to be great. What was Doc supposed to say? He terrible? What coach has ever he, said he that about just, an opponent? Doc's Come on, been Skip, around stop a it. Long time. And you've no, been around you a long time. You've you been around it. a long time. You Doc know Rivers coaches don't knows. take shots at other These players. These guys who know who played the point guard position, they see the gift. He's got the gift, and he doesn't use the gift because. So what good is the gift if you can't use it? I don't know. And and it, the problem is going to be, let's say. LeVar forces a trade, then the next coach will be at fault, too. I, that's why I said they're going to well, start their own league. Well, you making excuses for it. No, you not, keep I'm saying, oh, make, look at this, look at these games. Look at these, oh, he's 20 years old and got two triple doubles. All I see is I don't see consistency. five double doubles? Wow, that's pretty good. Consistency. Ooh. Joe, I was in that business, Joe. I had to get out of it. I was going belly up, Joe. Excuses or results? Yeah. Results pays bills. Excuses gets you fired. Mm. Well, well I, I don't like it that, that he hasn't been playing him in the fourth quarter. I don't like it. How can he's I? He's just a baby. He just turned 20 years How old. How can I? Okay, but you have to let him play through it. But and, and, again, I'm not making an excuse, but I'm saying what Lonzo can't do is if the coach is trying to teach him a lesson, you got to just keep playing. you got to try. You can't shut it down just because your father it, said you got to shut it down. Luke Walden's not trying to teach him no lessons. Luke Walton is trying to win a game. No, he's Well, you're either trying to win this year or you're trying to get better this year. So yeah. what are the Lakers trying to do? I'm trying to do both. And in the fourth quarter, he's you not helping me. You can't have it either. all in that situation. Yes, I can. 
Yes, I can. Fighting for what? Are you, do you want to get better for next year? Yep. Do you want him to, yep. to have experience in you, his rookie year? I want him to show me. Mm. You got to earn. You, hey. How's he going to show you if he's on the bench in the fourth quarter? Because when I put him in, he gave me two points. He's minus 15. He's a rookie. Hold on. He getting paid. He's a rookie. I mean, look, I get it. Okay. We, like, he, what's has Jason a, he has a target if you on his if back. You mind, if you don't mind me asking, what's, what's uh, Jason He Taylor? may be playing better, but that, that, that doesn't mean what's that he's Donovan a Mitchell? bust. It, we're not even at the all-star break. I didn't say he they was a bust. Play. I yeah, don't you did. see special. Yes, you did. No, you I said did. he was a bust. Skip. It's okay. It's Skip. okay. It's, I got it. You're on record. That's one thing Shannon Sharp. Don't miss no words. I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. I don't miss no words. I didn't say he was a bust. We'll see them again at the Sixers tomorrow night. And I don't see special. I will say, though, I don't think Leangelo and the mellow are ready for big three. I think Kenyon and yeah, Stacks. They, they would have Stacks. a hard time. <laughs> oh, oh, Stacks got this. Bonzi Hell Al, and Stacks. Al Harrington would have something to say about that. No mercy. Remember earlier in the season when the Cavs were struggling? Well, now they've won 12 in a row and they face the Kings tonight. The Cavs defense has made a dramatic improvement during their first 12 games. They were last in the league in defensive efficiency, but during their current streak, they're eighth. We're joined by FS1 analyst Chris Broussard here to talk about this unprecedented streak. It is. It's something. <laughs> Five, two, Cavaliers. Joy! Oh. Look, you can't, I like that. you can't belittle the streak. It's a nice streak. It, it's a good streak. This is what I think happened. I think LeBron got tired. He will never admit this. I, it, none of his guys, they'll admit this. But I think he got tired of hearing all about Kyrie and seeing how Boston was winning. And a little bit like, okay, we do need to play better because they, they balling. Yeah. And he's just, I give him credit for catapulting his team the way he has. And I have to say this, I think you would even agree with this. Maybe. He is the first <laughs> player in NBA history to be the best player in the league in his 15th season. Best. The best. I don't think you can name another one. Best. Kareem. Not no, in his 15th year. By that point, Magic was the Magic best player on the team. Yeah. So Let that. Me think about it. Let me think about it. That's, that's <laughs> well, a topic the maybe for another day. All of their issues. Um, I like what they're doing. Defense is the most impressive thing about this. It's the thing you can really sink your teeth in. As you said, from last to eighth. The most impressive thing to me on the defensive end is the three-point defense. Yeah. They were last in three-point defense. Then they, now they're second in this streak. I didn't think that I didn't know if that was fixable yeah, with sure. Kevin Love, with Kyle Korver, with old guys like Wade and stuff. So I give them a lot of credit. That is the most that's the most impressive thing and inspiring thing if you're a Cavs fan. Here's what I'll say though, and this is why I don't think all the problems are fixed. Because what the Cavs have found out in this streak is that sometimes less is more. They have less talent right now than they had you a about month I, ago. You worried about Isaiah, aren't you? Not, not so much Isaiah, because look, he's earned the right. You're going to put him in there and see yeah. what happens. I'm talking more about D. Rose. When he gets back, what do you do with him? Tristan, I mean, Tristan's going to play, We're gonna trade but him. does he start? Mm. Tristan and Shump should be traded. We're trading him for DeAndre Jordan. Mm. Well, you better throw in that pick. That's we ain't what, throwing that's it what on the, pick. Well, then you ain't getting DeAndre Jordan. What, I don't think. What about Boogie? That's what the Clippers okay, are saying right now. We'll get, okay, we'll take Boogie. For Tristan and Shumper? Yep. No. Nah. <laughs> if you could do it, yeah. You would do it. Yesterday yeah. you do it. Yeah. But no. Nah. So I think Ty Lue has got tough decisions to make. Less is more because the roles are better defined. Mm. Everybody knows their role now. Uh, Kevin Love is playing, I will say, the best yeah. streak of his career. He's, he's averaging 20 point, 21 points, 10 rebounds, 50% shooting, 51%, 40 from three, mm -hmm. and 90 at the foul line. He's never been an efficient scorer, even when he was in Minnesota. It's 45, 43%. He's the first player to put up 20, 10, 50, 40, 90. I know that's since Carl, Carl Anthony Towns. Those are the only two players to do it in the last 10 years. Mm. So Kevin Loves knows his role. It's not, am I second or is D Rose second? I'm second. Mm. Okay, Wade knows this is my unit. Yeah. Okay. Come now, on, the bitch. That's when Isaiah gets back, Love is gonna have to sink back probably to that third. I'm not sure Love shouldn't be the second option. Exactly. Love mm. is a perennial All Star. Mm. So these are quite D Rose between him and Wade. Mm. Let Wade be the point guard. That's where he's been excelling. So Rose might have to stay on the bench. So these are tough oh. decisions. Bruce Bruce Hart is fired up, hey, and overreacting. Out. They, they, all I'm saying is they're winning the, the East. <laughs> Call him Bron? No. 
I'm on 911. What is your emergency? <laughs> I like, of oh, the last two weeks, there's a six foot nine, 255 pound guy streaking. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. I told hey, you what was going to happen. That's I really told you. funny. Oh, no. You was, oh, Kyrie, the closer is gone. They play it really well, Chris Broussard. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I they got, still are playing I got really well. Yeah. Yeah. At the time you yeah. were doing all this huffing and puffing, I didn't huff and the puff. Cavaliers were in the level spot. If you don't mind me asking, Skip, what spot are they in nine in the East? <laughs> oh, they're number two. You got a cold? They're <laughs> number two. And hey, guess what? Before it's all said and done, mm. we're going to be on an 18-game winning streak. Have you mm. seen our schedule? Mm. It's looking real good, Chris. Mm. I told you, this man is the best player on the planet. Got Kevin Durant getting thrown out the game, mm. trying to keep up with him. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry about all that. You kept, you kept talking about Kyrie. LeBron James, over the last three years, suppressed who he actually was to appease Kyrie. Kyrie, you want to take the last shot? When have you ever known a uh, four-time? No, it's Kyrie. I need you to take the last I shot. I can't tell. Have you seen what he's been doing? I, I haven't seen anything yet. Yo, you seen it. Impressive. Oh, you seen it. That's what <laughs> you seen it. Did, hold on. Did you? Hold on. Did you just not see what he did the other night, Skip? Is it my turn? That might be a little far though. Mm. What? That LeBron suppressed to? Because LeBron. Look, he liked Kyrie being able to close. Okay. LeBron did like that. He, he liked Kyrie being able to close. Okay, but now we, we need some perspective and some truth here. So, I'm going to give you this. LeBron has played great through these 12 games, and I do not toss that word around lightly and loosely. He has played great. He is not the best player on the planet. Kevin Durant is. Oh, the stop. second best really? player on the planet has yet to play a game yet. And just wow. might play on Friday night in San Antonio because he's the best two-way player in basketball. Stop. And Kyrie has also played, and I do not toss this word around loosely, great for the Boston Celtics. Now let's look at these 12 games. The bigger story would be if LeBron and company had lost <laughs> Any of these games. I mean, I, I don't even... They lost what, those are the types of teams that were okay. beating them I, no early. I got it. There's that. one impressive game on this, this whole streak here, as you call it. At Detroit, I don't know what happened to the Pistons, but it was 36 to 23 after a quarter and a halftime. It was 73 to 46 LeBron and company. Yeah. Detroit's pretty good. Are they a world beater? They're just pretty good. They're 14 and 9 right now, but that was impressive. I'm going to give you one game and one game only because you have played three teams from the better conference, the West, so far in this streak. You were at Dallas when Dallas was 2 and 10. You played the Clippers when they were 5 and 8 and they had lost six straight games. And then this man had the audacity, this man across from me, to tell me that LeBron closed the game with 13, what was it, 13 straight points th 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 against th th a Memphis team that had lost 11 straight games, including that game, who had just fired its coach, unfortunately, David Fisdale. Terrible I thought it was, moves, it was yeah. unfair. But that Memphis had just played back-to-back -back against San Antonio that had beaten them twice in three days without its best player, Kawhi Leonard. And, and I'm supposed to say, way to go, LeBron. It was a close hold game. Why, why did he hold, need hold, to close hold on, it? Hold on, they lost 11 hold on. straight Miami games. Heat. You love Miami. You oh, thought they were a threat to the Cavs. Ran through them. They beat them by 11. Hold on. Philadelphia, 24, Oh, come 22. on. Are, well, are we going to take one Philadelphia? That's one of the better teams in the East right now. But, but hold on, hold on, Skip. You had no problem heaping praise on Kyrie when he scored 47 mm -hmm. in, in, in the overtime beating the Dallas Mavericks. You came over here and praised it. Well, I mean, that 47 is 47. <laughs> against the yeah, Dallas yeah, Mavericks. You think Kyrie the, is the, overrated. The same Dallas Mavericks that's, that's, three, yeah, that's yeah. 3 and 17. Did you see what he did? He just said, get out of my way. I'm going to – he LeBron makes, did too. Hold on. Hey, what, hey. About, what about LeBron and the Wizards? What about that uh, 57 and 12 he had on the against the Wizards? By the way, when Kyrie beat Dallas, Dallas was coming alive. And they have come alive. <laughs> they're pretty good. Hold on. But, but they're, they're not bad. They were 2-10 and ten when the bomb went there. What about that 57, 12, and 6 in mm -hmm. Washington? Are we going to gloss over that? With Bradley Beal, John Washington. Wall, Gortat, Otto Port, mm -hmm. Ubre. Are we going to gloss over that? Did Wait, you? I don't see that game in the streak. Oh, so, he, so what, are, what are we talking about? The NBA they, they is Washington. the NBA. I don't care who if you play the Nets 12 straight times. Which is basically to what win they 12 did. straight <laughs> games is impressive. No mercy. The Giants have been a mess this season. Last week they benched Eli Manning. This week they fired their coach and GM. Now they will reportedly go back to Eli as their starter for Sunday's game against the Cowboys. We're joined by Rob Parker. What's happening? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The reporter, Rob Parker. That's right. Look at him, Skip. He's a loser. Look at him. <laughs> 
What's wrong with he you? He loses. Right, that's what I asked. Oh. What's wrong with him? Oh. I mean, he drawn up like wet polyester out here. Oh. You, ain't sick, you know I'm, I'm living this California, L.A. Oh. life. Uh, avocado mm. toast. You no, know, I don't know about all that. Matcha but. tea. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just trying to eat healthy. Good I feel you. really good. Way to go. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, should Eli be okay with starting? Should he be with okay? No way, no how. Ooh. Eli... Should and, and I'm gonna say this first, because I know a lot of people are ripping on Eli both ways. You know, some people are pr over praising him, some people are ripping on him. I would take Eli Manning over just about any quarterback because this guy has won. I, I don't care about the Phillip Rivers regular season guys pile up numbers who never win anything. He won two Super Bowls. If you want to give him two great throws, two MVPs, beat Tom Brady twice right there. That's high on my club, you, you know it, love it, yeah. <laughs> including yeah. that 18-0 mm -hmm. Patriots team, right? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm all about that. Right. But right here, right now, Eli should step back and do what's right for the organization mm. and say, thank you very much with, with saying I could go back to starting, but I don't want to start. This organization has a chance to get a franchise quarterback in this draft. All these guys are laying there. This was the right thing to do. The streak's over. The time has come to, to move on from exit 9W. Do you know what? There's nothing left there for him. I, I don't want to sound like the Lone Ranger, but Tonto, our work is done here. You know, you move <laughs> on, get on the horse, and go to the next place. Mm. Because it's done. And it doesn't make it bad. I just think the way that it was handled, they, they, they handled could have been done differently. And then Eli didn't help it at either. When they said to the, him, hey, you can start or whatever, but we want to start playing these other guys. Let me ask you a question. They say, Rob, we're going to let you continue to work at the paper, but you write the first two paragraphs, <laughs> but the guy is going to finish it up, and he's going to get credit for it. You doing that? Mm. No, but the difference no. is... After, <laughs> after you've been on the cover consecutively for 200 yeah. No, you won two Pulitzer Prizes. Oh, yeah. You won two Pulitzer Prizes. Well, wait a well, minute. That depends if I get to write the rest of the column. Yeah. I, but, look, I hear you there, but he's not unlike any other quarterback who had more success than yes. Eli. Right. All right? Joe Montana should, should, should have said, if I want to stay in San Francisco until it's all done and I say it's done... He should have had that right. He won four Super Bowls, right? He, he didn't have that right. He probably would have been able to stay had Steve Young not won the, the MVP that season that he got hurt. Mm. That makes it a little difficult for you to bring. Yeah, but, but I'm still saying he still was 4-0 in the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's been done. Even his brother got pushed out of Indianapolis. All I'm saying is this is not unique to Eli. No. It's not. Eli it's, done, it's been done to so many guys. And, and what I said, and Skip and I both agree on this, Eli is – at fault here, too, because had he played better, this would be a moot point. I think the problem that people have with this decision is that you went from Eli to Geno Smith. If you went from Eli to Davis Webb, it's hard for me to believe that people would have this outcry because you say, we want to look at the younger guys. But the younger guy that you want to look at is Geno because Davis Webb was, was inactive. So how are you going to get a chance to look at him if he's in street clothes? But this is, this is the way I look at the Giants situation. They don't want to win. They don't want to move out of where they are in their spot. What can we Geno Smith gives you a better opportunity to lose. Right. It makes sense what? to me. Well, keep it Play right there. Geno. Don't hurt the other kid, Webb, right? The offensive line's not the greatest. So let Geno play and then go draft you another quarterback. And then you have two young guys. I think the Giants were trying to do that. And that's why people didn't understand why are they playing Geno Smith. Mm. So. The T-shirt the that you invented for one Tom Brady that had L-O-A-T on it, that should have Eli's face on it because you know and I know he is the luckiest quarterback of all time. Am I not right? He's not the luckiest. He's the luckiest. He threw the luckiest pass in Super Bowl history to Tyree. Did you see the, in his face mask. The throw to Manningham? It was, he made one great throw Oh, see? In the Super oh, Bowl. now it's... But that was he a was great lucky throw. because Tom Brady in that same game followed up with the one bad throw in all of his seven Super Bowls that he made. He missed Welker a little high and outside. Welker probably should have made the catch. He missed him, but, Skip. 
Okay. It, it was a. It was by Tom Brady's standards, he missed him. I I agree. But Eli was lucky again because if that pass gets completed up the seam and it goes to the five yard ball line, game. We're, we're having a different conversation. Well, because I, I agree. then all they got to do, they can run out the clock. It's ball game. The ball game over because now they just kill the clock because they had to leave. It was which, ball game. Which brings us back to Eli. He he made himself in his reputation and his mystique and his aura in the Big Apple off those two games, right? And he has lived off the cachet of those games for season after season after season. Yes. Because since the second Brady victory, they have gone six of seven seasons and missed the playoffs. Yes. And overall, Eli has led the league in interceptions not once or twice, but three times. Mm -hmm. And his QBR, my favorite zero to 100 stat, it has fallen each of the last four years. And even last year was the one year they did make the playoffs. And in the last six games last year, they failed to score 20 or more points. They were under 20 in all six of those games. Well, again, it's not all Eli's fault because it was Jerry Reese's fault. He didn't show up the offensive line or nope. get them a his run draft, game. His draft picks okay, didn't I, work I, out. None of them. Okay, so he deserved to be fired. But what happened was that John Mara, who now runs the organization, overseeing, you can't tell me he didn't have a hand in telling Ben McAdoo, okay, it's time to cut bait here. We got to we a need hand. to check out the kid. Both hands. Yeah, both hands. There's hands. no doubt about both it. Both hands. But Matt all of a sudden, wouldn't do that by he itself. Just do do it. It. He the then it turned into the all-time unexpected PR nightmare because Eli is beloved in New York City. Right. He is, dare I say, he's Jeter-esque yes. to people in New York City. Right? No, no doubt about okay. it. He's won so, two Super Bowls. Great in the community because he's won Walter Payton Man of yes. the Year. Yes. yes, and he is really a good guy. He is. Nobody says different. So in the end, Mara sits back and says, oh, my God, we created a PR nightmare, so I'm going to fire the coach and the GM anyway. I'm going to fire them right now because they'll become the fall guys. We'll take the glaring spotlight off 2-10, and 10, and now I can go back to Eli to give the fans something to get them home for the rest of the year. But it's the wrong move. I agree with you. It's the wrong-headed yeah. move because it's, it's nothing but damage control. Yeah. But Eli, I don't blame because he he's so beloved. He wants nothing but good PR in New York. So if he says no to that, I think it's kind of damaging to his PR. If I don't think I don't think so. If he if he uh, approaches it this way and says, this organization has to move forward. I had a great time here. I won the two Super Bowls. All those memories. There, there's a draft coming up, and there's five okay. or six guys there. And and for a guy to step out and say, especially since he didn't play. Yeah. And, and you could easily not play again, right? Yeah. yeah. Is okay. just say, I'm doing this. I'm stepping aside. Okay, I got it. Because you know, I want to help the organization that I love. Okay, I'm with Loved. you. But in the end, what <laughs> okay. Eli would love more is to finish his career in New York City, or at least in the area, exit 9W, w East <laughs> Rutherford, right? Because... Eli has a family established, and he's got kids in that in New Jersey. Yes. So why would he want to pick up roots and go to Jacksonville for maybe one more year or maybe two at the outside? Why wouldn't he want to say to John Mara, hey, I'll start the last four games, and, and let me start next year as you groom my successor? That's how he would want to finish in New York because he wants to stay in New York the rest of his life. That's, I, that's nice, but I wouldn't be a part of that if, deal. I, if I'm Eli Manning, I'm telling John Mara, Mara, Whatever. you're seven days late and a start short. Okay. If you didn't know better, you would swear this is a first or second year owner. Skip, this is a lot. Oh, oh, it's the whole family. Ain't no way, there's no way, Skip, a second year coach that's no he's going to be fired. So him looking at the young guys for what? You're not going to be there to coach them. Yep. There is no way. There's only a handful of coaches that has the cachet to do what he did, what he placed at McAdoo's feet. Mm -hmm. A Coach Belichick, a Pete Carroll, yep. they can do something like that year 14. The guy's aging. He's not playing well. You can make that decision. Not a guy that's going to get fired. Mm -hmm. Not a guy that's 2-10. and 10. You're not making that decision. Mm -hmm. The owner signed off on this. He placed it at his feet because mm -hmm. you know why? Ben McAdoo's not going to be there, but this is going to be on his resume. John Mara's going to own this team forever. As long as he's alive, it's going to be in his family forever. Well, yeah. And so he doesn't want that on his resume because some of the uh, old Giants mm -hmm. say, well, we showing up in Eli 10 jerseys. Yep. The fans, 
We know he listened to that radio. The fans oh, mean you know so, so we know what was going on here. This is not Ben McAdoo. Now, we can blame Ben McAdoo, but he was the scapegoat. Nobody <laughs> thinks that Ben McAdoo no made way. this call. But Eli could Eli could have put this to rest. Because mm. if Eli played better, Skip, we're not even having this conversation. Eli is the loat. Sure. <laughs> sure. Eli could have played better, but they're they're too intense. So at this yeah. point, what, is, what does it matter? Yeah, so, so now he had 210 consecutive starts. Now you're about to start I a new season. Like, I feel stream. like we should just give him a little asterisk. Like, this is the one time oh, that I Sean Mara no lost, lost it and benched him for Geno Smith and then just keep it up again, right? I'm going to keep Eli making about 16 million. I'm going to get that, Nobody's that million dollar that? check. No. None of us are on board with no. that. No. No asterisk. <laughs> I'm no. not going back in there. Streak's over. No mercy. The Patriots are rolling right now on an eight-game winning streak. They have the number one offense in football and are tied with the Steelers for the best record in the AFC at 10 and 2. The Steelers have a huge matchup Sunday night against the Ravens. Pittsburgh has won seven straight, while Baltimore has won three straight. We're joined by FS1 analyst Ray Lewis. Welcome back, Ray. Good to see Good morning. you. Morning. Been too long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who is a bigger threat to the Patriots in the AFC, the Steelers or the Ravens? Ah, uh, who is a bigger threat? So you take you take both of these teams, right? One of them which is the Pittsburgh Steelers, offensively, they can score on the Patriots. Defensively, they're going to have a problem stopping the Patriots. Let's go to Baltimore. Baltimore, I can see their defense really playing very well against the Patriots. Offense, I don't see them scoring no points on the Patriots. So now you have... Merge the teams together. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to try to that figure... That would be something. You got to try to figure something out. Because if, if you're thinking about New England, right, you gotta, you gotta be able to put points up on Tom Brady. You, you have to be able. That defense is not as good as it once was. That it's always been historically, right? And so now you ask yourself: Is Ben Roethlisberger the guy to do that? I think he has enough offensive weapons to go in there and absolutely do that. Baltimore will have to play a flat-out best defensive game they've ever played in their lives to go in there and beat them. And offensively, hopefully, they can get 17, 21 points. So, I, I, you know, if, I mean, I've been weighing this for a while. Like, who is in the AFC can make this run to dethrone the Patriots? And then you think about Tom Brady sitting back there. And now that's where that one gem that says, who can outplay Tom Brady? Who, what quarterback? Which one of them can outplay Tom Brady? And that's where I think the real issue is. So, I don't, I don't know. I kind of lean. I don't, I don't know. I lean. So, so, your answer is nobody, right? I, 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 you know, I said, this, I, I said this a week or so ago. I don't necessarily say nobody. I just don't see the, the team right now that can go in and dethrone the New England Patriots right now. For the sake of this conversation, I'm going to say the Steelers. Mm -hmm. But in my heart, I believe there's one team that can beat them. That's San Diego. That, because they got a defense mm -hmm. that can hit you in the mouth, and Phillip Rivers is not, a, not afraid of anybody. Absolutely. And I agree with everything you're saying about the Steelers. The Steelers offensively, when you look at the killer bees, Ben, Le'Veon, and Antonio Brown, yeah. They can move the ball against anybody. Right. Solid offensive line. They can move people back running the football. They can protect Ben. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Juju. And then Martavis Bryant. I like Jesse James. The tight end is really, he can, mm -hmm. he can move. I like that. But their defense, mm -hmm. no Joe Hayden. Ryan says here, we don't know if mm -hmm. and when he's coming back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the way you get to Tom Brady, everybody's like, well, you, you got to put pressure, obviously. But you got to collapse the pocket from the inside. Right. Because if you come around the edges, he's just going to step up. Mm -hmm. You got to force him to Bud Dupree. You got to force him to T.J. Watt. So Cameron Hayward is going to play mm -hmm. big. You got to collapse the pocket from the inside to force him. Baltimore can play outstanding defense, but the loss of Jimmy Smith is going to really hurt them yeah. because now, even though you have Marlon Humphrey, you put him into the starting lineup. Yeah. Now you got a guy that wasn't playing a whole lot going to the nickel slot. Mm. Do you really want to? That's what Tom Brady's going. Exactly. Yeah. And then you got the Ravens offense. They're they're 30th in total offense, 31st in passing. Now, Joe Flacco is not afraid of Tom Brady. He can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He's beaten him twice. He's a drop touchdown away from beating him three times right. in his own building. Mm -hmm. But not this Ravens offense. I don't believe the defense is strong enough to hold Tom Brady mm -hmm. to, say, 13 points. You got to get somewhere around 24 right. offensively and then get a couple of turnovers here or there. So I'm going to say the Steelers, mm -hmm. but in actuality, I don't think either one of these teams pose a bigger threat as the Chargers right. do. So, on one hand, this is just a silly question. <laughs> because on paper, it ain't even close. No. Right. We're talking about Big Ben and A.B. and Le'Veon and Juju and Martavis Davis. and I can do Jesse J. You just keep going. Mm -hmm. But 
on mental toughness, on psyche, on history and tradition, which is still alive and somewhat well mm -hmm. in that Ravens locker room. It's Ravens all day and all night. And I still that's my bottom line to this question. It is the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Even though right now, if you look at regular season, Big Ben versus Flacco. Flacco's QBR is 28th in the NFL right now. Jay Cutler has a better one. Bortles has a better one. Mm. Eli has a better one. Ooh. But we all wow. know what happens if Joe Flacco gets in the postseason. He turns into Tom Brady. No, I'm serious. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. He turns in. 10. He's 25 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, mm -hmm. and he is 10 and 5 in the postseason. And over his last eight postseason games, he's thrown at least two touchdown passes in each one of those. Mm -hmm. That's sensational. Yep. That that's inarguable. I, I you know, you, you, the, it, I I can't find anything, to, uh, any bone to pick with anything Flacco has done in the postseason. No. So, as you point out, Tom Brady against the Ravens, he's two and two in the postseason, and against Pittsburgh in the postseason, he's three and zero oh, all three yeah. in AFC Championship games, and Tom career ten and. Two against Pittsburgh, and and he's five and two at Pittsburgh just in his career. Yeah. So you don't think Tom's in his psyche? Wants Pittsburgh. He 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 wants Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he he has just dominated Pittsburgh. Well, you know, so one of the things that has always been different, AFC North, AFC North football, is what we were able to do on defense early against Tom. is the same thing the San Diego Chargers can do, and that's rush four. When you can rush yeah, I, four hey. and you can drop everybody else back, yep. Pittsburgh is the, one of the only few teams I've ever seen play him where they want to play him and zone blitz him. He, the game is too easy. Cover one, cover three. I know where I'm going with the ball. Outright. I'm, so, so when you play that and then you, and then you see him go continuously go down the field and you never make an adjustment right? because you want to hit him. But if you're not pressing that pocket from the inside, then that's why he loves to play Pittsburgh. Right. He's saying, give me Pittsburgh all day. Baltimore hey. pro, Baltimore's a totally different problem defensively because now you got to deal with pressure coming from the inside. You you ba you're barely going to no. be able to run the ball, and they're going to beat you up physically. If you look at the way Denver has success doing Tom Brady, mm -hmm. the two times they beat him, oh. they pushed the pocket yeah. with Malik Jackson mm -hmm. and Wolf, mm -hmm. and then they forced him to Vaughn and D. Ware. If you just come around the edge, yeah. he's going to step up in the pocket. you got to put somebody in his lap. And that's the thing, because see, the thing is with Joe, because Joe's arm is so strong, mm -hmm. there's no, e no element that bothers him. Mm -hmm. He can throw in rain, he can throw in wind, he can throw in the snow. Yeah. So he, he can throw it. The question is, is can the Steelers' defense yeah. with that three man and that. See, mm -mm. Coach Belichick is really a, a, is the master of the three down lineman. Yeah. So he's already, Brady, he's with Brady. Mm -hmm. So Brady knows where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Brady. Brady, look at your defense. He's like, okay, I, you you better not right back this tackle out there and bring that don't bring that slot guy. If you do, I'm gonna dump it to him yeah. before. Point yeah. taken. And my friend Ryan Clark at ESPN used to just scream to me, "They stole our signals <laughs> every game." They, stole. I said, they didn't steal your signals. He just looked at what you were doing and said, "I I got that." He didn't need your signals, <laughs> sure, right? You know, you know uh, this. <laughs> Really big, really good offensive line. When you're going against a three-man front, yeah. you always treat the backers as bigs because if you don't treat them as bigs, you're going to put your backs on Suggs. You don't want your back blocking mismatch, Suggs. Mismatch. So what you do is that you always fan it. You always kick your tackles. Yep. You got the linebackers. And see, the problem that the Steelers have is that the rushers, that three-man front, I believe in order to beat Tom, you got to have four down linemen. You got to be able to push the pocket and drop seven. Now, you can't give him, hey, don't let him eat all the time. Mm. So you got to give him something different. Yeah. But you got, it's got to be four, and you got to sometimes bring five, sometimes drop eight. But if you give him the same look, if you give him the same three man front, okay, he eat it up. Historically, the teams that has beat up, that's beat Tom Brady. The Giants just, in the Super Bowl, four man rush. The four Broncos, man. AFC right. Championship Absolutely. game. No, that's a good point. The Ravens. Yeah. yeah. They, they physically beat that offensive line, just physically, flat out, because that changes his his, his, his entire game. Skip mm -hmm. is totally. Different. You got to speed him up. You got to speed him up. Skip, if you just let him go one, two, three. That's too easy. One, two, three, four, five. Too easy. You're not gonna beat him. Too easy. You must speed him up. You must think him. You must make him think 
that the pressure is going to ride before it does. Mm -hmm. yep. And then he'll get, you know, he'll get and get around his feet a little bit. Sometimes you got to take a shot. Like Suggs, you got a tough personal foul. You got to put that in his mind. Oh, yeah, we coming today. Yeah. Yeah. We, we'll give you 15. But you, I just want you to know, put this helmet on your chin again. I'll be back. I'll be yeah. back. So Hold that thought. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one team still has Terrell Suggs, and one team does not have Terrell no. Suggs. And, and I know he's a little longer in the tooth, my friend T. Sizzle, but, but you – you're close to that team. Yeah. He can play, man. He can oh, yeah. still bring it. They can play. Yeah. What, what, what Sizzle is doing with this defense, you got, they got the most turnovers in the game. They, they do. They, they're a turnover machine right yep. now, right? Dean Pease, what Dean Pease is dialing up right now, yep. yeah, it's, yep. it's huge. But back to what Shannon said earlier, you losing Jimmy Smith changes the dynamics. It, it does. Because now you, you take you – The take, one guy that can go man One guy. And, and now you take Tom, and Tom is looking at this one guy saying, oh, I got one. I got one, and and as good as greatest talent as Humphreys is, he's still young, young. and experience is everything against a Brady-led okay, offense. But, but I would submit yeah. to you that losing Shazier is more important to that defense I agree. than Jimmy Smith is to your defense. But <laughs> but here's the thing though: not only did they lose Shazier, Joe Hayden is out. Yeah. So Which now you he's a man guy yeah. that you can put on somebody. Yep. Now you lose Shazier because this is what this is what we know, and I told Skip this yesterday. Right. You know when you play team sports, it's predatory behavior. We're going to find a weak link, yep. and we're going to take advantage <laughs> what, of it. The, yeah. So we're going to feed on that until you give us it's something. Name of the game. That's it's it. The the All I'm trying to do is find one weak link. I don't care if it's your corner, it if it's your safety, if it's your D lineman. Yeah. We find out. Look at Cincinnati. That game, the moment Burf went out, game how can we get Le'Veon Bell on 51? Absolutely. Yeah. How can we do it? Isolate. And they got him. They yeah. got him. They did. Yeah. Well, I can just yeah. tell you, Tom Bra the one team, Tom Brady does not want to see Suggs and Flacco. He just doesn't want to see I, mean, I believe that. You know? that, that. I believe that. Timmy William, I don't know where Ozzie find them jokers yeah. from, but he get them jokers mm -hmm. a little stump. They're about six <laughs> foot tall, about 300, and they ain't moving. And all they're doing is just plowing <laughs> their legs in the ground yeah. and letting everybody else And that run. running back, Alex Collins, every time I, I look, he, yeah. he, he looks like he's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. They would have to have the perfect game. They yeah. would right. have to have the perfect game. They would need 24. They, they would need got 24. to get to 24. Got to get to 24. Because mm. well, at home, Tom Brady going to get 24 The points. Patriots, Steelers, and Ravens all have big games this weekend, too. Yeah. Patriots are going to Miami on Monday night. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is going to be just Hey, hey, I, listen. They don't take that game lightly. Tom Brady. Joy. Tom Brady going to be he's a got a two and five, He's league. got a 2-5 he, record at, at Harvard uh -huh. State in December and January. Tom Brady's an 7 and 8 overall. He called Joe. Hey, Joe, so, I got a game. I got a game so. at 830. I need them crab legs at 10. Anyway. No mercy. Punishments from the very physical Steelers-Bengals game came down yesterday. Cincinnati safety George Iloka was suspended one game for his hard hit on Antonio Brown. He has appealed, and ESPN reports the appeal will be heard tonight. Steelers receiver Juju Smith-Schuster was also suspended a game for his block on Vontez Perfect. Schuster was not ejected, but he received penalties for unnecessary roughness and taunting. We're joined once again by Ray Lewis. Ray, do you agree with these suspensions? The game is in real trouble if what that safety did is a, is a penalty for him to get kicked out. I want you to look at that picture very closely. Do you see that kid's head turned? That's not a spear. That's not a direct, what, what the rule says is that you take the crown of your helmet and you spear somebody. That's not a spear. His head is to the side. Juju, Heinz Ward was on the sideline during that game. Heinz Ward made that same block famous. Now, standing over him, that's a problem. Mm. But the hit, that's football. And I'm listening to all of these people. Oh, my gosh, this is the most physical game. This is not basketball. When you, when, you, when you step out there in the AFC North, probably the last two decades, probably three, last two or three decades, the most physical division in football, when you talk about rivals who don't like each other, that's football. But you listen to, you take hits now, right? And, 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 it's, and it, it done filtered all the way down to the high school and collegiate level. Because now you make a hard hit and you're like, oh, my gosh, you can't do that. What do you mean? That's why I play the game, Skip. Mm. I didn't play the game to let one of Eddie George, Corey Dillon, Jerome Bettis, or Fred Taylor say, oh, that's, that's a great game. Hey, get up and pat me on the back of the shoulder. Hey, this game is great. I wanted to deliver a message. A lot of those hits, look, Juju standing over perfect. Out of, it, it's, it's not even a question. What Gronk did the other day, it, I, it's so embarrassing in sports. 
But when you talk about football plays, there's no way. If you're going to suspend a defender, because when he went into that meeting room, you know what his defensive coordinator saying? That's the only way you can play that. That's the only way you can play that. And so I, when, when the appeal goes in, I want to make sure the appeal is watching the final result and not pleasing everybody else who don't play the game. Because if you're going to please somebody, you got to please the people who scrapping up those cliques every day and putting their life on the line. You think Ryan Shazier doesn't feel a certain way? I, we put our lives on the line every time we go out there because we have a job to do. But for us to keep finding these kids for doing their jobs and now we're suspending them one game for making a hard hit? Ronnie Lott was the reason we played this game. John Lynch is the reason we played this game. Dick Buckus was the mentality, the way to play this game. And now we took in the game and we told everybody, if you do your job, if you try to make that ball come out of Antonio Brown's hand by making the perfect hit, I'm going to suspend you. Wow. Man, we might, I'm telling you, let's, let's just play flag football. Hmm. You know what happened? Those 32 owners got a letter from a court mm -hmm. from a federal judge that said you got a billion dollars to pay. Mm -hmm. That changed everything. That was the game changer. And you're right. That's the way when I came into the league, you sent a message. You went across the middle and covered two, they decapitated you, whether you were catching the ball or not, because they wanted you to know in the fourth quarter, if they thought about throwing it to you, you thought about Ronnie Lott, you thought about Dennis Smith or Steve Atwater. They don't allow you to play that way anymore, Ray. You're right. Mm. It's a different game now. You're right. And that Heinz Ward delivered that very blow on Keith Rivers, who wore 55, <laughs> peel black block, broke his jaw. Broke his jaw. From that point on, they says not only can offensive players be defenseless, so can a defender. Yeah. A few years later, they instituted, uh, earlier, they instituted the Warren Sapp rule. Remember, he put the hit on Chad Clifton. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, away from the play. From so the now you can't block on a return interception. You mm -hmm. can't block a guy that doesn't have an opportunity to make the play. They changed the rule. They're saying this receiver was in a defensive position. For me, I'm saying, okay, you catching a pass. Well, I mean, it's hard to catch a pass and defend yourself at the same time. So I, I get it. This, these are the rules where we are now. The problem that I have with this is that they gave them the same suspension as they gave Gronk. It, Juju made a football move. Now, they're standing over. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I, that, that's not me. Right. He's trying to dislodge the ball. That's it. He's trying to get a peel back ball. That's it. Gronk thought he was in the WWE. Yeah. He, wild, he was upset. He told you. The guy held me from start to finish. Not only did he help hold me, the official didn't call it, and then he got an interception on mm -hmm. him. The guy's laying on the ground. He winds up his elbow up and hits him in the most vulnerable part of the head, yeah. which is the back of it. Mm -hmm. And he got a game. So I'm saying let this be a teachable moment. If you fight, it's two games. Yeah. If you make, if you personal foul somebody in a non-football play, the Mike Evans. Skip, you remember Mike Evans in New Orleans yeah. when he came from yeah. the other side and hit the guy in the yeah. back. That's not a football not play. Because an offensive player can never block anybody in the back. So that's not a football play. Two games. Because they got, you remember, Skip, the ratings, we down 5%. Now, I believe they're going to come up because of what's going to happen next year. The players are not going to even come out for the national anthem. Mm. They're going to have the national anthem because the players used to didn't come out. It right. wasn't until, you know, the uh, military Years started ago. giving a few dollars yep. Yep. and they had the players because it looked good for the players standing mm -hmm. at attention mm -hmm. on the sideline. They're going to go back put them in the locker room because you ain't going to see no more protests. Right. They got to clean, they're going to clean this up, Skip. I get your watch. In the offseason, they're going to put it in the play. Fighting, if you fight two games. This, oh, they, they finna ramp it up. You, I, I'm just, you cannot, to your point, you cannot penalize someone for purely doing their job. That's that's totally different. I know, but here's the thing. But I got, that, I, that billion dollars you, and, the, and the safety, and, it, and we've seen the decline mm -hmm. in the youth registration of playing this game. Yeah. It's a violent game. Skip. You know that. You covered it for 40 years. Violent you game. played it 17. Violent. I played it 14. It's not a contact sport. It's a collision sport. Yes, sir. And the game of football in this very premise is about intimidation. Mm -hmm. Is because I'm trying to send you a message. You think you're tough? I believe we're tougher. Okay. I hear you, and I really hear you and the message you're sending, because in a vacuum, I agree with you on both those hits. They're not suspendable hits.
They're not even finable hits once upon a time. Yes. They were just hits. Yeah. They were football plays. But I remind you, when you played the Pittsburgh Steelers as a Raven, it was a respect-based rivalry. It was ferocious, fierce hitting, but it was done out of respect for each other, and the blood wasn't that... I, I never got bad blood between Ravens and Steelers like I get between these Bengals and these Steelers, and it starts with the Bengals. Well, yeah, well, Burford and them started when they started all that cheap shots. Yeah. When we played, it wasn't, and I only played two years, it was yeah. no cheap shots. No. I'm hitting you in the mouth. That's correct. Straight up. It's real hardcore football, but this has degenerated into revenge games where it's bad blood hit followed by bad blood. It's eye for an eye for an eye for an eye. And this was a game on Monday Night Football that was a poor advertisement for a game of football that yeah. has taken a PR beating this year Correct. for lots of reasons. Yes. Yeah. But in this case, it became an ugly football game, and it was mostly the Bengals' star uh, fault. Yeah. But Vontez Burfecht has been a primary perpetrator of the bad blood. So Juju takes a shot at him and then stood over him because he knows the history. He's a rookie, but yeah, he knows the yeah. history. And he stood over him like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And he's winning big points with his teammates mm -hmm. in the locker room because he got him good. That's only about yeah. screaming karma. Karma, karma. karma. Yeah. Okay? So it is followed on the same drive <laughs> by the other hit in question. So right. remember, they just go down the field, boom, 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 and get to the end zone. And then that play happens that you're talking about. It's borderline. I, I think you're seeing it after the head's turned, but it, there was helmet to helmet contact. Okay, I, I, I got you. The only you. thing on our shoulders is our head, but okay. Right. Okay, I got you. <laughs> but but it, it, it looked, it came across as re, a retaliation type of a hit. You got one of ours, I'm going to get your best player, as Burfecht took out Antonio at the end of the playoff game. Right. And then Burfecht had the audacity again to bring it up last week. I, A.B. is winking at me on the field like he's faking it. Like, I, I don't think he was faking it, but whatever. Yeah, he going in and out of yeah. consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what he was winking about. Yeah, he wasn't weak. <laughs> yeah, so the point is I, the NFL made a PR move to say, no, no, I'm going to suspend you for a game and you for a game because we can't have any more eye for an eye because it's a revenge battle now. You got yeah. it? Skip, I, I, I get it. Ray, we're not playing in 2000. Not even 2000, 2012, 2011. Okay. You, okay, when when you walk in your coordinator's room, everybody's isolated. Tight ends go in their room. Yep. Linebackers yep. go in their room. Mm -hmm. Safeties go in their room. And your coach, he leans back in his chair, and he's just going to have the remote. And the only thing from a defensive perspective, mm -hmm. from the linebacker to the safety position that you're talking about is physical football. That's all you're – the only way you're making it on these teams, on these rosters, yep. you're, you're saying this kid comes out, hits Antonio. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I got you, you in a, in a vacuum. I, I got it. Right. Okay, now back to this man because he believes that the New England Patriots and Gronkowski and maybe Brady, they're all getting preferential treatment. That's, that's where you see this coming from. I, I just feel – if Gronk was trying to make a tackle and he did the play, or if he's trying to make a block, yeah. but when the guy's on the ground and you make a conscious decision, because remember what they said, we can't determine intent. What Gronk told you, it was malicious and it was intentional. Yeah. So he intended to do what he did. He could have seriously hurt this man. Okay, I got it. And you're right. That was just nothing but an after-the-whistle <laughs> cheap shot. Yes. Cheap shot. Okay, got it. But... Gronkowski had no history of cheap shots before. He was not considered a dirty player, so he has no reputation or track record for yeah. this. And in this case, the referee, the whole officiating crew saw this because it happened after the whistle. They didn't even eject him for this. And remember, A.J. Green went MMA, you know, he Real did naked strangle show. hold. Yeah, yeah. You know, remember this? And he's throwing punches at Jalen yes. Ramsey. And they ejected him, but they did not suspend him for that play. So in this case... One game is fine with me because he doesn't have a track record, and I do think you have to put it in the context of the game. You say I'm making excuses for him. They they clutch and grab him every play, and he finally Ray. snaps. Oh, that's that's football. Okay. Ray, yeah. let me ask you, you ever got hell? Yeah, you hell? man. So did you, did, hey, after the play, did you turn around and punch him under? No, the 17 years. Thank you. 17 years. You don't I, think I got hell? Yeah. 17 years I played this game, Skip, and I have never 
in 17 years nope. ever retaliated or threw a punch. But you did have those big elephants up there. <laughs> well, the okay. way, you, right? They let me do what I do best. <laughs> yeah. They let yeah. me do what I do best. Yeah. All I'm saying, to Shannon point, this offseason, mm. this has to be simple. None football play, okay. football play. Because those are two totally different categories. Yep. That's it. Football play, you got to. Okay, They've but... tried to work that out with what's a catch and not a catch, and we, we still. <laughs> oh, we still, little, we still stuck with that. We're too. a little hazy on yeah. that, yeah. too. Mm, you, you need to stop. This ain't 2000. That stuff that Goose and Sam Adams was doing the quarterback. That Bobby Boucher. <laughs> that Bobby Boucher. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports 1 of one.